and welcome to GC360, where news comes full circle. I'm Ross Thompson. And I'm Maddie Holtz. We bring you news from the Georgia College campus and across the Milledgeville community. Coming up, Georgia College's African American alumni have been honored in a big way. We'll have the details. Teaching women to defend themselves. Is this victim blaming? And ATO held a charity baseball game. We'll fill you in on who won. All that and more on this edition of GC360. Now an update on the car accident that happened on Montgomery Street outside of Beeson on October 21st. Bailey Bergner, who was an airlifted to Navison Macon, has been in therapy for just over a week. She is walking and slowly standing for about 25 minutes at a time. She says that all the prayers and messages she has been receiving have been heard and she thanks everyone for their support. We continue to pray for Bailey and her family as she continues to recover from the accident. The monumental accomplishments of African Americans at Georgia College get some high-level recognition. GC360's Gabrielle Duchateau covered the story. A gala event in Magnolia to celebrate the creation of an African American Alumni Council. This past June, the Georgia College Alumni Board of Directors voted unanimously to create the council. The purpose? To get African American alumni more involved with Georgia College, Georgia College students, and other alumni. And just another reason for the African American Alumni Council was about giving back and making sure to acknowledge those that have led us to where we are. During Alumni Weekend, the council held a gala event. So this night is about honoring our past, but also the people who are difference makers today, which are our present and our students who are the future. The council highlighted the African American Male Initiative, or AAMI, a statewide program to increase the number of African American males who complete their post-secondary education. Also recognized, the Call Me Mr. program at Georgia College, which aims to increase the number of African American men who become teachers. Yeah, so tonight the AAMI program is being honored uh, for the service that these gentlemen have, have given to Georgia College uh, and the fact that they're continuing to persist and graduate at unprecedented rates uh, across the state. Councilmember Kenny Ray Washington received the Trailblazer Award for his outstanding achievement of bridging the gap between community and university relations. The history of African Americans at Georgia College was also celebrated. The council created the Keepers of Promise Award to honor people like Joyce Hill Vassar, who integrated Georgia College in 1964, and Dr. Thelman Larkin, who in 1968 was the first African American male to graduate from Georgia College. The African American Alumni Council is making plans for the future. I mean, we want to start scholarships and start giving some students some opportunities. We want to make sure we have wonderful events like this to continue to uh, get alumni to come and engage. And we also want to try to have mentor opportunities. We know that if we pair them with the right mentors, that can be an easier process. So those are some of the things we're hoping to have come out of this. For GC360, I'm Gabrielle Duchateau. Some of Georgia College's women are learning how to defend themselves. Here's Carl Tulis with more. At Mark Moore's Jiu Jitsu, they are having ladies night with free self-defense classes for women the first Tuesday of every month. In this class, it's mostly releases and some easy offensive things, you know, hands, eyes to the face, kicks to the knees, things, groin, um, mostly escapes and, and awareness, you know, pay attention to what's going around you. Number one thing, get your head out of the cell phone. According to Georgia College Security and Fire Report of 2019, there was more than four reports of rape and domestic violence at Georgia College's main campus. According to the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, the majority of sexual assaults are not reported to the police. Dr. Lyles says the national statistics shows a decline in crime trend. Uh, right now, we know that crime is actually lower than it has been over the past several decades, so we saw a relatively large peak in the early 90s and then it proceeded to decline and it has been declining for the past several decades. Dr. Lyles think there are both positive and negative aspects of women's self-defense classes. When we're focusing on teaching a victim to prevent their own crime, it's actually risk reduction. You're putting the ownership of preventing the crime on the victim rather than remembering that the ownership of the perpetration of the crime is the offender. They're the ones who have that ownership. They are the ones that decide or choose to commit the offense rather than the choice being on the victim. For some students, it's a way to feel secure. 
Oh, just for instance, the street that I live on doesn't have any street lights at night, so it's really dark, and I want to be able to know that I have the capacity to make myself feel safe. For others, it is about becoming more confident in their abilities. I like knowing how to defend myself, and I learned a lot of techniques in the class that makes me feel more confident whenever I walk down the street. And Mike Moore's message is clear. When seconds matter, police are minutes away. Reporting for GC360, this is Carl Tullius. The Georgia College Library is hosting a second game night after a successful first installment on Monday night. Our very own Evan Sabat checked it out. Roughly 15 students fled to the back corner second floor of the library to partake in the event. There were many different games to choose from, including Scrabble, Connect Four, Battleship, The Game of Life, Clue, Twister, and many more. Students, faculty, and staff joined the fun, and what's more, snacks were provided. Uh, there were some um, staff and faculty, definitely from the library, showing their support and just general interest in the event. Um, but I think I saw some community uh, members and definitely just more students, at least coming uh, for the day that we had on Monday. This event was open to anyone who wished to attend. You could stay for five minutes, an hour, or for the full four hours. The purpose was to bring together people who love games and wanted to meet new people. We just want to make sure that people are aware that it's a good space for gaming, uh, whether that be board games, console games, card games. Uh, we just want students to know that we it's a place to come together and to have fun. Um, so I would hope that if not the same number, more come on Thursday. Even some video games were included. Um, definitely feedback matters. Uh, let me, let us know that is something you probably want to see more of. Um, I think the library would definitely want to do this again next year. Reporting for GC360, I'm Evan Sabat. Game night is just getting underway right now, so you might consider heading on over there once you've finished our live broadcast. Coming up, we'll take a quick look at last night's political debate on campus. Stay tuned. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. On Wednesday evening, Bobcats Vote held a political debate inside the Arts and Sciences Auditorium involving all the major political parties on Georgia College's campus. The parties included the Georgia College Republicans, the Young Democrats, Americans for Liberty, Americans for Socialism, and Turning Point USA. The debate focused on some of the major issues in the United States today, such as immigration, climate change, and term limits. This was the first debate held by Bobcats Vote, and they hope to put on another one next year, with 2020 being an election year. They want to educate students about the issues, different viewpoints, and political groups. Now, Noah was at the event and saw it all go down. So, Noah, what was it like to be at the debate? Uh, it was fantastic. Uh, there was a lot more energy there than I was anticipating, mostly from the crowd. Almost every uh, political party had some sort of support group. So when they would finish speaking, there were always cheers and applause. And I really wasn't ready for it. I was ready to show up at a debate. You know, like when I think of political debates, I kind of just think of a couple of old guys 
going at it for a little bit, like very low energy, but like people, people were excited. They cared about what um, the parties had to say. Um, yeah. So it was, very, it was very fun to be there. Right. So, so it sounds like there was a pretty even representation of you know, people and different ideas there. Was there any party that stood out particularly to you? Um, there were two main parties who kind of went back and forth a little bit. There were the Democratic Socialists and Turning Point USA. Uh, and so Turning Point USA had a lot of prepared statistics and like uh, ready written uh, speeches while Turning Point was a little more uh, less organized, maybe not organized, less organized, but just a little bit less prepared with it. Um, not as many statistics to back up their facts. So, but their ideals clashed and so it was always really interesting in the discussion part after the question was asked when they would kind of like go at each other. Okay, that's, yeah, that's interesting. So, uh, uh, what would you say the turnout was like? Ballpark? The turnout, I mean, almost the entire uh, ANS auditorium was full. It was, it was astounding. It was definitely in the front, completely full, and in the back. It was only the very back rows that, that didn't have people in them. So I hope Bobcat Vote was happy with their turnout, um, and hopefully they'll have that, that amount of people again. Yeah, well, no, it's, it's good to hear you, uh, you know, some thoughts on it. I'm glad you had the chance to go. You may have noticed the t-shirts that were hung on front campus last week and been curious about why they were there. Our own Nathan, Nathan, Nathan Connolly found out. One of the most prominent colors on these t-shirts is red. It stands for rape. According to a U.S. Department of Justice study that spanned from 1995 to 2013, nearly 12 percent of college women were raped or sexually assaulted in a given academic year. For Georgia College, that would amount to 900 women. Right behind me is Project Clothesline, which is a project that helps raise awareness about interpersonal violence here in our community. The Women's Center has been putting on this event since 2003 to bring these chilling statistics to light. We asked Georgia College students if they believe events like these are helping the problem of sexual violence. I think that it's a good start, but I think that more can always be done. I think it really boils down to the fact that Georgia College itself can't prevent sexual assault in those measures, um, but they are raising awareness and um, definitely making it known. Students agree Georgia College is at least making an effort to combat this issue. The Woman's Center will continue to showcase events like Project Clothesline to help put an end to interpersonal violence. Reporting for GC360, I'm Nathan Conley. It's getting to be that time of year again. That's right, flu season. We've got you covered on how to avoid it this year. Flu season is in full swing again, and this is one bug you really don't want to catch. Influenza, commonly shortened to the flu, is a contagious respiratory illness that is most common between October and May. According to the CDC, the flu can cause fever and chills, along with sore throat, muscle aches, fatigue, cough, and headaches. Each year, thousands of people in the United States die from the flu, and many more are hospitalized. Almost 80,000 people died due to influenza during the 2017 to 2018 flu season. A common myth is that the flu shot can actually give you the flu, but the flu shot offered at the Wellness Center is not a live virus, so it cannot give you the flu. Students are often in constant contact with each other, especially on a college campus. So getting a flu shot not only prevents you from getting the infection, it stops you from giving it to other people. Milledgeville has numerous locations where you can get a flu shot. You may think of the chain pharmacies like CVS and Walgreens first, but there are other options available, such as Walmart or Kroger. If you're a student at Georgia College, the Student Health Clinic is also an option. They offer flu shots to students anytime between 8.15 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. When it comes to paying for flu shots, there are two options. You can either buy the flu shot, with prices being around $40, or your insurance may cover it. No matter where or how you get it, getting a flu shot will benefit both you and others. For GC360, I'm Noah Green. When we come back, the sports crew will give you the rundown on GC Sports. Stay right there. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs.
get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to GC360. It's time for your weekly sports update. I'm Herndon Lee. I'm Daniel Master Natero. And I'm Kirsten Skipper. This weekend, the Uncles with Benefits flag football team will be traveling down to Georgia Southern to compete in the state championship. After winning the state championship last year, the team is ready to get back to defend their title. The tournament starts on Friday afternoon and will conclude Sunday afternoon. UWV's first game will be at 7.30 Friday evening. The team hopes to bring home another state championship. So if you're not doing anything this weekend, come on down to Statesboro to cheer on your Bobcats. The Georgia College volleyball team faced off against the Jaguars of Augusta on Tuesday, November 5th. The Lady Bobcats showed up to battle but fell short in a three-set loss. They lost the first set 10 to 25 and in the second they fell 19 to 25. The Bobcats battled hard in the third set but went down with a score of 21 to 25. The Lady Bobcats are back in action Friday, November 8th against the ladies of UNC Pembroke. The men's basketball season starts this Friday. Parker Holstein went down to the court to talk to the team about how they think this season will pan out. The Georgia College men's basketball team aims to bring a physical, fast-paced style of play to this year's season. The 2019-2020 season is set to kick off November 8th. The team wraps up preseason play with some confidence. NCAA rules limit the ways that teams can practice in the preseason. Hourly limits are set on strength and conditioning training and practice using a ball. This year, new NCAA rules increased the time allowed with the ball during preseason, giving the team more time to play together. I just feel like the team chemistry is just way better this year just because of that fact. Coach Mark Gaines, in his 17th year at Georgia College, is changing some things up this year. Last year, Georgia College was more of an inside scoring team. This year, the team aims to score more points from the perimeter. I don't think we're rebounding the ball very well. I think we're guarding pretty well, but, um, but we're not rebounding, we're not finishing possessions uh, like we need to. Basketball demands full body strength. There are a lot of 50-50 situations in which the player with the most effort wins. The team has spent a lot of time in the weight room this offseason to get stronger in hopes of finishing more hustle plays and grabbing extra rebounds. Come to the games. Come out and support us. Uh, come out, you know, we need all the support we can get. Hey, hey, shuffle, shuffle. As the season approaches, the Georgia College men's basketball team wants your support. Reporting for GC360, I'm Parker Holstein. Last Friday, the ATO of Georgia College traveled down to Luther Williams Field in Macon to play a game of baseball against the ATO of Mercer. I went down there to see what the game was all about. On Friday, November 1st, two ATOs came together to play America's favorite pastime, baseball. The ATOs of Georgia College and Mercer faced off in what they called the Fall Classic. Each team had prepared for weeks and felt like they were ready to win. I think our key to success today is really going to be our bullpen. We've got four or five fresh arms and we've really been working in the bullpens these past couple weeks and uh, really just minimal errors. Um, I think it's really going to be uh, getting those extra bases that uh, really uh, capitalizing off mistakes is really I think how our runs are going to come in and then our pitching is what's going to save the game. So look, we've been practicing, we've been working our asses off the last few weeks so we're just going to go out and win is what we're going to do. So I know Leighton Sheets has been a big uh, team like player. He's a leader on this team. Nolan Donnelly is someone who we look to. Uh, and then our chapter president, Graham Guthrie, he's really come out and like made a big impact for the team. The Bobcats scored three runs in the first inning and Mercer answered with one. In the second inning, Georgia College scored another run, but Mercer scored three to make the game all even. But in the bottom of the third inning, Georgia College pitching got out of hand. They allowed six runs, mainly off of walks. After the third inning, it was 10 to five Mercer. But Georgia College would score three more runs in the fourth inning to make it 10 to eight. And for the rest of the game, 
pitchers held each side scoreless. Despite being down, Bobcat fans kept their hopes up. As the ATO guys are the best and supporting their philanthropy means a lot to me and I want to watch a great game of baseball. <laughs> to support the fundraiser for pancreatic cancer and also support all of ATO. ATO did a great job creating a real baseball atmosphere. They played songs and had a character race. The Mercer manager even got thrown out of the game. After a close play at first base, the Mercer manager confronted the umpire behind the pitcher's mound. Manager Adam Penland proceeded to break his clipboard and the umpire threw him out of the game. We'll let you decide if it was real or just theatrics. In any event, the ATO of Georgia College and Mercer raised over $2,000 in tickets and other sales. All proceeds went to the Calvin Johnson Jr. Foundation, founded by the former Detroit Lions wide receiver. The foundation helps at-risk youth and community organizations. So Herndon, you covered this baseball game last Friday. What was it like? It was really cool. Um, it was really neat to go see uh, both ATOs come together um, after they've been practicing for uh, just over a few weeks, kind of see what they've been working on. Um, and just seeing the game like play out, um, seeing things that uh, Georgia College worked on, which was the pitching, but in the game, it was their pitching that ultimately uh, defeated them. Um, and then Mercer's ATO that really worked on pitching and um, the pitching for them saved the game. So I heard someone famous was supposed to be there. Did they ever show? Um, so at the beginning of kind of like this tournament and everything, uh, Calvin Johnson was actually supposed to show up and kind of be there for the first pitch and throw the first pitch. Uh, but unfortunately, he couldn't make it. And then there was talk about Mike Fultonevich, one of the starting pitchers for the Atlanta Braves, uh, decided to show up. Uh, but again, he decided he – uh, couldn't make it to the game, but he did donate uh, a pair of cleats to be auctioned off uh, for the charity as well. So that was really unique. That's awesome. Wish you could have been there. We've got a bunch of sporting events happening this weekend. Come out and cheer on your fellow Bobcats this Saturday at 3 p.m. when the GC men's basketball team faces North Greenville in their first home game of the season. Also, make sure to wish luck to our women and men's cross country teams women's basketball and volleyball team as they compete at away events this weekend. And tonight is senior night for our women's soccer team, so make sure to come out and support them in their match against USC Aiken. Thanks for tuning in to sports. When we come back, Frankie Masters will give you the scoop on the theater department's latest production. Stay tuned. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to GC360. I'm Frankie Mastris. And I'm Jordan Richardson. Congratulations for a successful opening night Wednesday for the play Ballet Ruse, directed by Karen Berman. Frankie, I understand you had a role in the production. What exactly did you do? So essentially, I am one of the four ASMs, which is assistant stage managers for the show. So I basically do whatever that our stage manager needs us to do or the director. So during the rehearsal process, I would like stand in for actors if they had to miss. We would tell them lines if they forget them. And then we would also have to draw the blocking for every single scene and page in the script. And the script is like an 80-page script. Oh, wow. 
Um, so then during the show, we basically have like pre-show duties. So we swept the stage, we set it for the top of act one, and then we also have to cue the actors and actresses back behind the stage. It's like a, it's a stressful job, but it's really fun, and I'm really thankful I had the opportunity to take part in this. Yeah, you had a lot to do. All of the student actors and technicians have done a phenomenal job in putting on this show. A special congrats goes out to stage manager Callie Langston and all of the other head technicians for working behind the scenes to produce such an outstanding show. The story revolves around a new era of ballet in Russia at the end of a Tsarist period. It was a controversial time politically and artistically. The actors and dancers in the show portray real life people. They are passionate about dance and care about their partners. They experience all kinds of drama for their art. Come out to support the 40 cast and crew members for all of their hard work. Visit gcsutickets.com to purchase your tickets. There are only nine performances left, so get your tickets today. For national entertainment news, if you're feeling nostalgic about your childhood, look no further. Netflix recently put out Victoria's Sam and Cat and the Big Time Rush movie all on their streaming platform this month. They even added a fairly odd summer to their server. Take some time out of your busy schedule and relax for a binge session. I already know my plans for this weekend. Frankie, what was your favorite childhood show? Honestly, my favorite childhood show probably would have to be SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> it's, re <laughs> it's really just a classic. You're right, it is. I think my favorite would have to be like Zoe 101. I hope they put that on Netflix. I cannot wait to binge watch that. <laughs> That's a great show. So, I really liked Zoe 101. I only watched it like once or twice. So really? I loved it. I watched it like every day. I couldn't stop watching it. My dad made me and my sister stop watching it when Jane Lynn Spears got pregnant though, so that was kind of fun. But yeah, that's all for the time we have this week. Let's throw it over to Gabby with the weather. Welcome back to your weekend weather forecast. I'm Gabrielle Duchateau. Hopefully everyone is getting used to the cooler air that we have had the past week. After a dramatic change in temperature on Halloween, it looks like we are finally setting into the cooler weather. It's definitely not warming up anytime soon. We have cold fronts moving into the eastern part of the country. But let's jump into this weekend's weather. Friday is going to be a mostly chilly day and mostly cloudy. The high will be 59 and the low will drop to 35, almost reaching freezing temperatures. Chance of rain is 20% and the humidity will be at 64%. Saturday is looking like a wonderful day to spend outside in an afternoon, as long as you have a coat. It's going to be sunny with the high reaching 56 and the low dipping again to 35. A chance of rain is 0% and the humidity is at 47%. Sunday should be an even nicer day than Saturday. You, sh you might not even need a coat to spend the day outside, but I'd bring one just in case. It will be a nice sunny day with the high at 65 and the low at 42. Chance of rain will be 10% and humidity at 55. Starting Monday, the cold front I mentioned will be moving through the country to the east. It is expected to be in the 50s and 40s throughout next week. So those of you going home this weekend, maybe think about bringing that winter coat back to Milledgeville. That's all I have for you, so make sure to take advantage of that sunny, yet chilly weekend ahead. Back to the desk. Thanks for tuning in to this week's edition of GC360. I'm Ross Thompson. And I'm Maddie Holtz. When we're not on air, we keep you up to date on our social media pages. Facebook.com slash GC360, at GC360 News on Twitter and Instagram, and on our YouTube page, YouTube.com slash GC360 News. Always available to you, GC360, where news comes full circle. All right, and it's just that simple.